These are my saddlebags that I started. I've been hand hammering them, doing air chasing or repose work. And I'm gonna show you how I started the lids of these guys. And I took my design, laid it over, and just stenciled it out, and transferred the image to the underside. And then you'll see I got into hammering away. And it is, it's a lot of hammering along, repositioning, getting point hoops work. This is the teardrop hammer where I'm pushing down from the inside. And then I'm using the punch to set those edges. So this is after about 15 minutes of work where I've punched the eyes down, I've raised the, the forehead, the face back out. And then now I'm going to go back in at these eyes and push them back down a little bit further and then turn it over and help define the, the face. And I just keep working right around that edge around each of those to define those borders that are around and then I'm going to start working on the, the teeth. So I just draw them out in Sharpie and make sure they're even. And again working from the top side pushing that back down or the whole thing kind of ends up with this dome shape and it sets that line pushing the teeth back out here and then chasing around with the, the very small punch. So I haven't worked on any annealing on the metal, uh, just because I'm not moving it that much. If I was trying to move it any farther than this, then I would have got out the torch and started doing some annealing, but then it might warp a little bit of the, the thing anyway. This is after about a half hour of work, and then I'm, I am going to go back and do the eyes just a little bit more, give it a little more pronouncement. And then I'm going to put the flames on top and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. These are the punches. I just went down to Harbor Freight, got a cheap set of cold chisels and punches, and then ground the ends off and then took them over the polishing wheel and put the profiles on that I needed, cleaned up all the edges so they don't leave marks that I don't want. To, these guys are about three quarters inch wide, little bitty guy. And I basically just custom made my own, my own drifts or punches, whichever you want to call it. This is also, I think, a Harbor Freight uh, teardrop mallet. It has a small dome and a, a large dome. And then every now and then I go back over, and once it gets chewed up, I just sand that down smooth and get that profile the way I want it to. The other tool that I, one of the other tools I use, is a small ball peen, just an inexpensive one that I took over the polishing wheel and cleaned up that so it doesn't leave scratches in it but it does leave the dents that I want. The only problem with this one is is it leaves very small dents and you take a long time to plunge them out unless that's the effect you're going for. This is actually the the second lid because it's a matched pair where I started with doming the the forehead of the skull. And below that I just have a 4x4 cedar post that I had around that I used a uh, a circular saw to cut a, a divot in. You could hammer one in, you could carve it with carving tools and stuff like that, but it gives you something to get that relief in. And here I'm using it's another Harbor Freight tool because they're cheap and inexpensive. 
from their their body hammer set and I went through and polished that face as well and I was just planishing it and that the planishing is just small even hits all over the place to take out any highs and bring up the lows these are the two together two lids together and I'm just comparing to make sure they both fit And here you saw I took my, my iPad and looked up uh, flames because I draw them very poorly and just used it as a light box to draw on and then cut out the flames that I'm going to put on and do the same thing with the flames as I did with the, the face. Make sure, that was me making sure that I got the, the orientation right of each flame so the one, they're mirrored images of each other. And then it just simply taking the drift down. You know, and, and here a lot of this stuff you could do with an air chisel if you took the, the chisels and, and just ground them down, made them smooth. Uh, it's, the problem is they hit really hard and really fast and they're hard to control. Where this I can control every hit. And this is about 15, 20 minutes in of doing the flames. And then I'm going to go along and work all the edges back down from this side and work these. So it defines the edges, just like on the skull. And this is what they look like together. And I think that I'm gonna end up doing on the front of the bag, just off or to the left of this one, a applique skull on the front to give that a raised. And then on the back, I am thinking that I'm gonna put another skull back there that I can make the eyes like a tail light. I haven't got there yet, but that's how I did the air chasing. <laughs> 